Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I'm a past president of the North American Menopause Society, and today I'm joined by Dr. Jewel Kling. Welcome. Thank you so much. So, I'm the average woman, and I'm going to represent my patients who are the average women who come in, some with intractable hot flashes and night sweats, but come in with a healthy dose of skepticism and even fear and anxiety about the notion of starting hormone therapy, despite the fact it's been decades and we have so much more research, for me as an average woman coming in who's really quite bothered and I've tried everything else and yeah. nothing's working, yeah. um, is it permission that I'm looking for or is it information that I'm looking for? Hmm. That's a great question. It's probably a combination of things. You know, fear guides so many of our medical decision making as patients and even as clinicians. Um, but I, I think there's just so much misinformation and myths out there that you probably heard from your friends, from you know, social media and such. So um, I would see my role as really, uh, well, first of all, uh, evaluating to make sure you don't have any of those contraindications or reasons we wouldn't right. want to use hormone therapy. But those are few. And if you are average risk and could use hormone therapy, really reassuring you that the risk associated with hormones is low. Now, some of this depends on when you start it, so how old you are when you start hormone therapy. Specifically, what we've seen in research studies is that women less than age 60, or within 10 years from their last menstrual cycle, that the benefits of hormone therapy largely outweigh the risks. So I think focusing on those things. Um, and, and what would that risk be? So if I'm particularly focused on breast cancer, I'm the average risk patient, don't have a strong family history, I haven't had a previously abnormal mammogram, yeah. but yet I'm still fearful that this is going to give me breast cancer. Can you put that into a relative risk or perspective for me? How many women and where would I be? Yeah, absolutely, and that's probably one of the biggest fears we have as women is, is cancer, especially breast cancer. Um, well, it looks like there's a couple of things that influence that breast cancer risk. The type of hormones that you're prescribed, the duration of use, um, specifically in the Women's Health Initiative, a study that looked at um, hormone therapy and risk found that after five years of use, that's when the risk went up. Um, and if you have your uterus, like you've not had a hysterectomy, so you need a, a progestogen, which is a medication that's used to protect you against endometrial cancer, it seems like women that take both of those have just a slightly higher risk of breast cancer. But I would want to reassure you that that risk is still low. Um, and that overall the benefits, especially if you're having life impacting, quality of life impacting hot flashes and night sweats, to, to not, um, turn away from hormone therapy or disregard it, it can still be an option for you. Now with that said, I would still encourage you to continue to get your um, breast cancer screening as recommended by your doctor mm -hmm. um, and to implement healthy lifestyle habits that can significantly reduce your risk of breast cancer like regular exercise, a healthy diet. And are there any other benefits? So we've talked a little bit about the risk and mm -hmm. often it's breast cancer that women worry about more than anything. Yeah. But any other benefits other than my hot flashes and night sweats going away, which is a big benefit. <laughs> yeah, that is a big benefit. Um, and hormone therapy is the most effective treatment for hot flashes and night sweats. I think I think a lot of my patients have heard, oh, you know, those other medications, antidepressants or gabapentin and things, and sure, th those have a place, but remember, hormones are the most effective for hot flashes mm -hmm. and night sweats, and that not only helps your symptoms, but improves your quality of life and may help with other symptoms like sleep and cognition and those type of things, too, just as a secondary reaction to your hot flashes and night sweats being treated. Um, but the other important thing that it benefits is your bone health. Um, which is something that's really important for us as we go through menopause and postmenopause, because all of us women are at a higher risk of osteoporosis and then osteoporotic fracture, which is um, a significant you know, diagnosis. So hormone therapy is actually indicated, FDA indicated for treatment or prevention of osteoporosis. And one last question in terms of my heart health. Mm -hmm. Will menopausal hormone therapy do anything for my heart? Because it's typically older women that get into heart issues well behind men. Yeah, well what we see from the, the studies is that women that start hormones early in menopause, so less than age 60 or within 10 years from their last menstrual cycle, that hormone therapy is not um, bad for your heart health and may in fact be beneficial. Good to know. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Absolutely, thank you for hosting this important topic.